Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another episode of Trapped Under Plastic. And we are, our, usually our energy level is about here, you know, if you're listening, that my hand is higher than my head. Yeah. But bidet, today, bidet, bidet, ooh, that was a... But bidet. But bidet, we're down here and I'm about nipple height. Yeah. yeah, we're lower. We're lower on the spectrum. By the way, this is the podcast for the miniature enthusiast, if you're just stumbling onto it. And we're sad today. We are. It's not a podcast about bidets and nipple heights. No. It's, it's a day for mourning. It is the bidet for mourning. <laughs> Um, and it's not the only day. It's not the first day. No, we've we've been going through this morning, um, <laughs> this morning morning. Yeah, for a, a little over a week. At Gr- this point. Grief happens in stages. It does. And uh, I was I was in pure on seeing red rage mode at at the beginning. Right, we're coming to acceptance right now. Yeah, we're not coming to there. acceptance. Right, and so this podcast will launch on on Monday. Um, and two days after the launch of this podcast will have been the day we would have gotten in the car and start driving to Adepticon. And that's why we're sad. Right, right. Adepticon is canceled due to fears of the coronavirus and not wanting to spread it. Yeah. It's one I, of those things where it's like, I, I can't be mad. No. But I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all about the, the selfish nature that we have as humans of how this global thing affects us personally right and this is how it affects us personally right yeah um and so for folks that don't know what what is adepticon scott well are we getting ahead of ourselves here we probably are but i feel like we should still define it so we're not they're not completely lost sure on what it is yeah yeah adepticon is the biggest miniature painting convention in america possibly in the world i don't know it compares to things like smc and salute and Monte San Savino, but I think in terms of attendance, yeah, it's the largest miniature painting focused convention in the world. Right. Um, there is a ton of games that happen there too. Big 40k tournament, big yep. Age of Sigmar tournament, tournaments for everything, Infinity, and all the weird games. And <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the company? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right. W I R D. W Y R D. Right. Yeah. All the Steam Forge games, the new Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, there's just a ton of new games at, at, on the show floor, and so a lot of people are coming there from the gaming side. But there's a ton of people that are coming there just for the painting, or primarily for the painting. Right. Exactly. All right. We're gonna we're gonna put a bookmark on that. Yep. And we're gonna come back to it. Did you ever have cool bookmarks as a kid? I was a dog ear kind of kid. You folded the paper? Yeah. Okay, see, I'm the kind of kid that was like more excited about the bookmarks than about reading. Oh, yeah, at the Scholastic Book Fair, you were all about the fancy bookmarks? Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, I bet you were. (laughs) (laughs) All right, you got a funny story about a pizza lady? Oh, gosh. Um, Make us happy, John. All right, yeah, I'll make us kind of happy. So the two minutes after this, this story happened, I sit down with my pizza, and I text you immediately and say, Scott... I have a story for the podcast, and I can't tell you right now, even though I really, really want to. That's kind of the life right now, is we can't discuss things in detail because we need to discuss them on the podcast. Right. I need your true, unadulterated response. Um, And I'm building up this story much bigger than I should. So (laughs) about uh, two and a half weeks ago, I was traveling for work, and I was going to Florida. And I had to stop at O'Hare as a connection flight, and I had about an hour and a half. So I thought I'm going to get some pizza in the food court because I had that place. What's the name of the place where we went to at Adepticon last year for the deep dish pizza? Ghirardelli's? Yeah, Ghirardelli's. Okay. They have a food court Ghirardelli's with personal pan pizzas oh, okay. there. Okay. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm getting a personal pan pizza. Okay. And there's like they come right out of the oven and then they're in this little glass thing and you just pick your pizza. Mm. Obviously, I got Italian sausage. Okay. Obviously. Okay. You're a sausage so, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I can, I can take them all. <laughs> I can take all the meat. Yeah. But uh, the sausage is speaking to me in that Do moment. you like the fennel in sausage? Yes. Okay, I cool. love a spicy Italian sausage. Yeah. My wife hates the, the flavor of fennel and anise and things like that. So, A noose. No, yeah. not a noose. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, she probably hates that too. Yeah. That oh, black licorice yeah. kind of flavor. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. works in when it's married with all these other things. That's yeah. for me. But I, I cannot I eat agree. black licorice out of a bag. Sure. I'm not a 
barbarian. No. That's disgusting. Yeah, weirdos do that. Ugh, make me vomit. <laughs> so I picked my pizza. Obviously, I picked the sausage, not only because I like sausage, because it was the one that just came out of the oven. Okay. Right? So you got you to you Oh, you were sculpting it out. Yeah, okay. I was really ready for this. And I picked the pizza, and I go over to the lady at the checkout. And she was super nice and friendly. And she started out by saying, hello, sir. Uh, ma'am? Ooh. And I, oh. Questioning. Like, she, and I look up at her face. And she had this split second of not knowing if I was a man <laughs> or a woman. And I was like, I didn't know what to think. Like, my brain wasn't going anywhere. It was just kind of like froze. It was like, <laughs> and then she, after she goes through a similar, like, half second of just breakdown in her brain, she goes, Oh, um, sorry, you're just so pretty. <laughs> the, the recovery. No, it's a bad recovery. And I'm like, I, so I'm like, you know what? All right. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm like, Okay, I'll take that as a compliment. That's what I said. I'm like, I'll take that as a compliment. And I'm like, you know what? She was, I don't know. I was just the most uncomfortable three seconds of my life. Yeah. I didn't know what to say. She didn't know how to recover. The rest of the interaction, I'm like, just take my car, take my car. Let me get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I need and, to leave. And she didn't know what to say <laughs> after that. And she tried to like, just like the default conversation based on her workplace is like, oh, you, you, this is your destination or whatever. But she's stumbling through it. Uh, and so I'm like, uh, wait, she was trying to maintain a conversation other than just about what you wanted to order. Yes. Like, where are you going and stuff? Yes. Oh, no. Yeah, because she was just trying to get off topic. No. And that must be a standard thing. Sometimes you just got to, you just got to, you know, let that thing happen and just die to it. And just yeah. <laughs> just fall on that sword. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I'm walking back and I'm like, I don't know what to think of that. <laughs> Maybe she was just busy and just glanced. And I am really pretty. So <laughs> my hair... Like, I don't know if it was kind of swoopy that day. I, it wasn't like pulled back behind my ear or anything. But either way, you know what? In the in the environment that we live in, in today's age, it's great that people can be whoever they want to be. Sure. And if and if I was uh, a female that I was wearing like a flannel and whatever, that was dressing, you know, more masculine, she didn't want to offend that person either. Sure. So right. I, I that's the way I took it. It was just like she didn't want to say sir and then second guess. And that just like, you know, I'm just a, a female that's dressing the way I dress. Right. And so I'm like, okay, that's fine. I can't grow facial hair anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to put it on that. All right. Yeah. Right. Like if I could, I probably would just to prevent, that prevent from this from happening, happening again. again. Yeah. But uh, the CDC does say that to prevent the spread of COVID-19, men are supposed to shave their beards. Oh, so we're, we're ahead of the game. Look at that. High five on that one. No beard. No, no beard, beard squad. Sound off in the comment section. Woo. No beard squad. So and we just do that because we're jealous, really. Yeah. I mean, I am. Yeah. I wish I could grow a beard. All yeah, of I the know. men in my family can grow beards. Oh, gosh. Other than me. Blame your mother. It's on her genes, isn't it? Yeah. But her does her side have the family? Can they grow beards? Uh, My... Opa, which is my mom's dad, doesn't have a beard, but he also isn't balding, which is, that's a bonus. See, here's a question. Would you rather bald and have a beard or not have a beard and not bald? Option two. Yeah, I would rather I have the hair so. on top of my head. Yeah, I think so. 10 days out of 10. Yeah, but you know, I'm the, the receding hairline is creeping. Yeah, but you're old enough now where it's like, I don't think it's going to get ever to the point where... Oh, you think so? Yeah. There's hope for me? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. My wife is a doomsayer when it comes to my hairline, and she's like, this is the beginning. I'm like, wow. The end. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You should be like, oh, should I make observational comments that make you feel bad? <laughs> <laughs> See how that turns out? <laughs> so you mentioned the virus, the coronavirus. Uh, we are planning a class in California, May 2nd and 3rd uh, in Los Angeles, and uh we uh it's funny because i think the travel ban or the, the travel suggestion ban is uh from now until uh like the end of april and our flight is the very first day of may so we're gonna analyze the uh 
the, the climate and the forecast of how this uh, virus is spreading. And then probably mid-April, we're going to make a decision as to whether or not we are going to uh, postpone that uh, class to a later date. We definitely want to come out to Los Angeles and teach a class. I don't think there's a world where we just would cancel it entirely. Um, I think it depends how this all you know shakes up in a month from now. But in regards to the class, we're going to make a decision mid-April to uh, postpone it to a later date or not postpone it. And those who have paid for a ticket will have the option to take that new class at a new date or get a full refund for their class. So that's how we're kind of addressing that. And we will definitely send out an email regarding that situation and that decision uh, when we come to a decision. Yeah, I think the important part there is, well, one, we only have a couple seats left. Yeah, five seats. So if you are interested in our class mm -hmm. in Burbank, California, um, we do encourage you to still sign up. Mm -hmm. um, there is there is no detriment to doing that if you want one of those seats. In fact, if those seats fill up and we do have to reschedule, those people get to claim their seats first. So right. there's no guarantee if we reschedule, if you don't get a seat now that you're gonna get one later. True. Um, and we the freaking site is amazing. It is amazing. You know, It's like a freaking, I don't even know what it is. It's like, like a, a theater. theater. Yeah. It's like a, um, yeah, like a theater for plays for like a smaller, um, a smaller kind of auditorium. And yeah. it's all for us. And all the doors are closed off. Yeah. And it's also connected to a game store so right. we can buy paints and all sorts of things, you know, that we want to buy. Yeah. On yeah. spur of the moment. Yep. <laughs> we're definitely going there. And the owner is awesome to deal with. Yeah. So it's just a matter of, is it now? Or, you know, will it be in July or whatever? But mm -hmm. um, long story short, five seats left. Um, and then we'll be fully booked and we will um, have, be in email communication with everyone that signed up for the green lighter or yellow light. We're mm -hmm. gonna call it yellow light. There's no red lights. No, we're not going to put on the red light. I mean, unless the government puts on the red light, then yeah. Well, Rocks <laughs> Hey, I was, I was wondering if you're going to get that. Um, yeah. I mean, until this evolves into the full on T virus, <laughs> Then but people are acting like it is. Yeah, they're yeah. Amber just sent me a news article while I was driving up here. She was like, "There's a there's a shortage on ammunition and guns." <laughs> and I'm just like, "What is going on?" <laughs> there's no such thing as a shortage <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> in, in America. In America, yeah, you just always prepare for that. See, typically, if you own, I mean, yeah, if you own firearms, I just assume you always stockpile for the apocalypse yeah you probably have a good a healthy amount of ammunition yeah so if you guys aren't stockpiled and the zombie apocalypse happens just come on down here yeah and we'll be fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll be fine scotty um all right so those are our newsy news those, yeah those are the, the pre-newsy news the pre-newsy news mm -hmm. oh right never mind that's not newsy news that's stories yeah stories and other fun bits yeah, yeah we're still figuring this out right yeah <laughs> i don't know how many episodes we're gonna need how many hundreds of episodes we're gonna need <laughs> to figure this out all right but now we can talk about what we have painted in the past couple of weeks as we recorded last mm -hmm. what did you paint john i finished my dragon whoop whoop yeah, it's back there in the corner. It's freaking massive. It's the size of a bowling ball. It is. It's a big dragon. Yeah. She's she's a clever girl. It's bigger than, okay, yeah, Jurassic Park. Okay, <laughs> I just need to make sure that everyone knows that I know these things, okay? Um, yeah, it's bigger than your last thing. It is. Like, yeah. Kind of like by 30%. The wingspan is so big. Yeah. And each wing is, is like bigger than my hand. It goes from like my fingertip down to halfway down my forearm. And then when you put them on, because obviously you have to paint those separate. It's just too unwieldy to paint something with the wings attached. Mm -hmm. um, although I wish some parts of me wish I would have because I had to then attach them and then milliput all the seams and then repaint to blend it in mm -hmm. where the wing meets the body and then the underbelly color. And that was a bit of a pain with them all attached. Mm -hmm. But long term i think it was a much better solution of having to deal with all the hours i spent on her body not to have to work around those wings um but yeah they're huge they stick out it's probably eight inches um wide maybe longer but anyway i finished her um and i was about like 75 percent done with the her base mm -hmm. when we got the news that there will be no Adepticon, meaning there will be no Resident Beast competition this year, meaning I want to throw her in a fire pit and enrage. I don't understand how you, you would ever feel the desire to do that. I couldn't. I, I was like, we're going to we're going to unpack that emotion <laughs> uh, later in the podcast because I don't get it. But yeah, oh, I was I was so fuming. 
it was it's just it was a matter of 48 hours it went from 48 hours of yeah we're like 90 percent sure it's still gonna happen to nope even before the announcement you're like no it's done yeah it's a matter of time yeah so sure base is, and we're gonna talk about something in the after party in relation to her base that oh. i tried something new and exciting there okay um but uh, yeah, that's the big thing that I put a lot of my hours in. I, I started working on a Golden Demon piece, but um, mm -hmm. again, that as soon as the news broke, there was the one that was the one thing of relief. I was like, oh god, I don't have to stress out about crunching out this piece. Yeah, which I'm really excited to do. So I'm like, oh, I'll really give it its full attention sure. for Golden Demon next year. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, I painted so in regards to Adepticon impending, I painted a lot of stuff. Uh, to finish a lot of videos so that I'd have a good amount of, you know, chunk of time to work on a Golden Demon entry while not having to worry about videos. So one thing I painted was this 3D printed model from a company called Titan Forge Miniatures. Uh, it was this chick with a banner. Her, I don't know how to pronounce her name, uh, but it had a big banner, so I did a big freehand on it, a big fish. Oh, the big koi fish. Yeah, the big koi fish. Um, so that was a fun thing I got to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I had fun... I didn't show it in the video, but I had fun with the rest of the model. I did the speed painting that I, did, I learned from uh, Rafaela Pica, but I changed it up. Um, I washed it with, uh, I think, Reichlin Flesh Day, but I also mixed red ink into that wash to make it even more red. I wanted the whole thing to look kind of like magenta and purpley. Mm. Um, I mixed in magenta ink, not red ink. Um, but yeah, so I had a lot of fun with that, doing mostly a purple model. Uh, even the hair and the skin tone, everything is, is kind of purpley. Um, but yeah, the, the big old banner, that was fun to do. And then I painted this four-armed Goliath uh, from a different Kickstarter called Hand of Glory, where his hands are like magnetic and you can replace it with different weapons and, and things. Um, but I, I went for a white skin tone and uh, was partially successful uh, <laughs> achieving that. D white depending skin tone. on who you ask. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, probably started too dark with the shadow. If I just had uh, maybe removed one layer of contrast, it would have read more as white. Turns out there is such a thing as maybe too much contrast uh, oh. when it comes to painting things like white. Uh, who knows? Not 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 totally underst understood if that's actually maybe one of the reasons why I didn't read as white. But so yeah, four armed Goliath dude um, painted his pants black to also kind of demonstrate in the video the idea that when you're painting black and when you're painting painting white, the majority of the object needs to be black uh, or white to have it read as black or white. Um, so those two guys started to paint. I have a question. I was thinking as I watched that video, you, do you watch you, my videos. I do. I'm always so astounded when people who are like maybe my closer friends or maybe, maybe a little bit better manager painters actually watch my videos. Oh, cause like, I don't know if I'd watch my videos. <laughs> wow. Then maybe you need to reevaluate. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is a problem. I've been ongoing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the fact that you went with a warm white affected the interpretation that it was white based mm -hmm. on the fact it was skin solely because mm -hmm. the human eye yeah. sees it as skin and sees those warmer tones i think they just think of it as a pale skin tone yeah maybe but if that would have been like a blue white yeah or maybe even just a purple yeah yeah it would have i think it might I, i'm curious i don't know for certain yeah. but i wonder if that would have had some the the eye would have a uh, recognize that as more as a white tone quicker mm, yeah that's possible there's so many interesting things that could be learned via painting the exact same model in two different or three different or four different ways but ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> yeah i certainly don't want to repaint that model again we just with, with a different shadow <laughs> right <laughs> it'd be awful because there's a lot of skin to do <laughs> yeah it was it took a long time in the way i painted it was super tedious because i started on that max black shadow and it went all the way to pure white. Um, yeah. and so layer after layer, it took a long time. Um, so that was not fun. Uh, but yeah. Okay. That's what I painted. Well, that's a, a pretty nice transition into today's sponsor. Oh yeah. What is today's sponsor, John? Scott, let me answer your question with another question. Do you like badass airships and highly detailed character minis that you can use in all of your role-playing games? Because I know I do. Well, John, it's funny you mention that because today's sponsor specializes in exactly that. Skies of Sordain is a Kickstarter for 3D printable airships and highly detailed character minis for all of your needs. For high fantasy and arcana punk 
RPGs. If I'm being honest, I don't even know what Arcana Punk is, but I know I need it in my life. Mm. With over 70 character minis, you'll be sure to find what you need. Everything from a traditional human fighter all the way to the obscure, I don't know, dragonborn artificer. In the airships. Oh, baby. The airships. There are over a dozen airships available with this Kickstarter, and each one has fully playable interiors and modular options. All the ships, minis, bases, mechanical animals, let's call them mechanimals. I like that. Are fully printable from home with a medium FDM printer or a resin printer. So get out there and order Skies of Zordain today. Skies of Zordain. The Kickstarter itself has ended, but you can very easily late pledge to the campaign via their My Mini Factory website. So thank you, Skies of Zordain. Skies of Zordain. For supporting mini podcasters like Scotty Boy and myself. Mm -hmm. The links to all of the awesomeness are in the show notes below. Thank you once again to Skies of Zordain. Let's get sad. Bum, bum, bum. So, Adepticon is canceled, but we have a contingency plan. We do. Should that be later on in the, in the, in the conversation? I think it, yeah, I think we evolve into that about what are we going to, like, what are we going to do now? And kind okay. of that kind of area. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk memories. Let's just ping pong back and forth with memories. Pow, pow. I'll start us off. You do that. Okay. The first Adepticon I went to, Adepticon is in... Schaumburg, Illinois, and my family lives in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin area, which is about an hour drive from the convention. So when I was first going, I didn't go with any friends. I didn't stay at a hotel. I just stayed at my mom's house, my dad's house, and drove down every single day because that made sense. It was, it was less expensive to do that. And uh, I figured, okay, I'm going to this convention, a bunch of famous mini painters there. I love them all. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do an interview. And I made a video, I think it was probably 2016 or 17 uh, you can watch that video it's it's still up where I basically am walking around interviewing people and asking them fun questions and uh, one person I saw on the vendor hall was Angel Geraldez Ooh. and he had like an assistant walking around with him I'm sure it was also someone of note, but I didn't know who they were. Were they carrying like a clipboard and like a Honestly, checklist yeah. of stuff to I do? I think they were. Wow. Uh, so I was like, this guy's important. But I, I knew who he was. I knew he was important. And I had to work up the courage <laughs> to talk to him. Yeah. So I like walked by <laughs> like five, five times, like doing strafing runs uh, just to like be like, <laughs> okay, nope, that didn't work. Okay. Abort, and, abort, abort, abort. Yeah, I need, the, I need the right entry. And so it was, it was fine. I introduced myself. He didn't speak English very well, so the person that was there was actually there to help him translate English into uh, Spanish or Italian. Spanish? Spanish. Spanish. Um, and so that, that, that made sense. Um, and so I had my list of questions uh, that I was asking. I think most people the same list of questions. And uh, one of the questions I asked uh, on Hill was, are you competing in Crystal Brush this year? And I'm like, you know, what are you doing? And then... Uh, the guy uh, told him the question in Spanish, and then I think he responded to me in English, and he was like, I'm a judge. And I was like, how did I not know that? So I mean, they don't, like, publish it anywhere. They don't, don't they? No. It's, okay. And it's not on the Simon site or the Crystal Brush site. I know, because I looked. Okay. For okay. a couple of years, because I wanted to know and be like, yeah, I'm going to buy him a Coke. Yeah. Oh, to do a little <laughs> bit of the, a little bit of the bribery. Yeah, greasing of the palms. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I guess me, I thought I was like, dang, as an interviewer, I should, I should know before asking a question like that. So I felt like an idiot. You don't work for CNN, like I know, but but he had a handler, so. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but yeah, that's my first memory. A little bit of a oof, but ouch. Mine's also an oof. Yeah. Uh, not for myself, but me being totally socially unaware. <laughs> um, so the first year that we went at the Crystal Brush, uh, which is the painting competition, was the painting competition um, <laughs> at the awards ceremony. Yeah. Okay? Um, I had made the final cut, but didn't had an, any expectation of actually placing top three. Sure. And so I... Uh, I end up getting second place in my category and I'm on cloud nine and I am just like bouncing off my chair, like schminka. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm, you know, I'm going full party boy mode on all the other painters after it's all done and we're all getting up from our seats and people are kind of like chatting and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Totally unaware that I like go up to like 
Matt DiPietro and Sam Lenz, both of which had monstrously amazing pieces that year and didn't place. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and I completely am like super excited. And then like I see their faces and I'm like, oops. Yeah. I shouldn't be doing it like this no. for these people that just spent hundreds of hours and are crushed right now. Yeah. And that is something since that moment, I was like, okay, realize that for every exciting excitement that is experienced at those award ceremonies, there are a dozen crushes. Yeah. And so it, it's such an awkward time. And you don't, I didn't know what to say to them. Other like, I'm like, I don't want to say you got robbed. I think I probably did say that, right. but I, in hindsight, I shouldn't say that because that I'm not the judge. I don't know all the criteria. I, it's not my role. Mm -hmm. What I probably should have said was, I really loved your piece. You know, I'm bummed for you. Yeah. Something like that, which is truthful. And like, I, I remember leading up to that, um, the ceremony, you and I always like go back and forth about who's going to place and what, what pieces we think. Yeah. Yeah. Not even necessarily what we think is the best, but what we think is going to place. Yeah. It's our, it's our, you know, our Las Vegas betting odds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I had both Sam and Matt's pieces in top three in best in show wow. that year. I had, I, I can't remember one was one and one was two and I can't remember which I had for each. Mm. And neither of them placed in the top three. Yeah. And so I was just like, I can't imagine. And I'm sure people are coming up to them all con long and being like, oh my gosh, just, dude, it's going to be yeah, so amazing when you win. Juicing them up. Yeah. yeah. You're going to hold a big check over your head yeah. and all this. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, it led me to really be like, well, that's what we're all going to experience. The best painters experience disappointment when it comes to competitions. So. Sure. Are you saying we're the best painters? Yeah. Us specifically will never feel that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, time for another memory. Uh, well, probably not this most recent year, but the year before that, uh, we were playing a, uh, a 2v2 Age of Sigmar match. Yeah, we were. And you were crapping on me. Yes. Me, uh, me and Josh, you were just crapping on me. Uh, yeah. And I was like, okay, you know, I was getting salty because I was like, it's Josh's fault. <laughs> 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 but like uh, a moment of happiness was when I saw you over at your backpack doing something mysterious. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell are you doing? So I whipped my phone out and I started taking pictures and I realized he's making goddamn mixed drinks out of his backpack. <laughs> right? That's how <laughs> so we this do. This is actually a fairly normal thing for conventions, apparently. You didn't know what it was. No. You were still <laughs> I was like, why is he going to his backpack every hour and a half or so and kneeling down and looking so conspicuous? Yeah. So I have pictures of you just like, what's going on? You know, just like, <laughs> <laughs> you uh, thought my backpack was filled with like codexes and dice. Yeah. It's yeah. not. No. It's filled with booze. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was fun. Uh, yeah, that's right. Because I think it was like months or even a year later when I first saw the evident pictures that he's had of that. <laughs> yeah, you know, just a little bit of blackmail right there, but not really. We did, funny. we did like curb stomp you guys that game, though. Yeah, definitely. Um, mostly because I coached Jake into what to do to like destroy your wood elves. <laughs> <laughs> I got like one round of shooting off before they died. <laughs> yeah, you need to bubble wrap those puppies. You needed Josh's ghouls to in be front. in front of them and then yeah. pushing up with you behind them. Yeah, yeah. Um but uh yeah, but Jake also had those Zinchi flyer uh stingray looking things. Super fast. Like yeah, they were like moving like meow 18 inches. Yeah. And just just booped right in front of your what else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just held them there cuz like they couldn't shoot anybody else. Sure. Um couldn't shoot off my my necromancer, which is the key to victory. Oh, okay. Let me make a little note of that. He killed the necromancer. necromancer. Uh, you kill the necromancer, the skeletons are suddenly a wet paper sack. Okay. So <laughs> good to know. Now you know. Um, do I have another one? Oh, I have a, I have a one that I thought of. I have a one you that okay? I thought of. Okay. Okay. When you were talking about starting on hell, um, for two, I've been to two Adepticons. This would have been my third and I have not gotten up the guts to talk to Vince Venturella in person. 
Really? I've never talked to Vince in person in my life. Okay. I don't know why. I, I like I've talked to plenty of other people there. I just I couldn't do it. Like I I had that moment of like abort, abort, don't talk to him. Mm-hmm. And now like. I was on his channel and did an interview. I talked to him over text like weekly. <laughs> like like we're like, you know, shooting stuff back and forth. I, and I'm just like, how have I not been able to talk? Like, It's the green smock that he wears. That apron, I'm just like, I just can't deal with it. It's too much pressure. I can't talk to him. He's, he's something about him. is just like mini paint aristocracy. He is. Yeah. Yes. And it's like the way, the way he walks around. He's like, it's like, you kind of want him to notice you and be like, Oh, Hey John, how's it going? Yep. As opposed to the reverse. But he's just like, he's just like, he's like above it all. He's like high and mighty. Yes. So he's, he's scary for that. He is. He is. Well, he's not, he doesn't like hold himself with like his chin pointed toward the ceiling or anything. No, no, no. no um, yeah. It's just, he just acts like he knows no matter what he's doing. He's like, he knows exactly why he's doing the thing fully, he's doing. Fully confident man. Yes. In yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> in everything. Um, That's how he can pull off the green fucking smock and, right. and not look like an idiot. Like yeah. I would look like. Yeah. It's, like I have a black smock with like sick patches on it and shit. And he's like, has this green smock. It says like, I love you on it or something, <laughs> something like that. You know, we need to get one that just embroidered says Vincey V. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make him wear it. I'm, hey. sure he, I'm sure he would love that. Yeah, he probably would. All right. We'll put that on our list to do. Um, so that kind of allows, I don't know if you have more stories, but I'm going to do a little yeah. transition here and then you can go back to more stories if you okay. want. Okay. But this transitions to me, um, a learning experience that we've had through conventions and kind of us talking about why conventions, mini conventions are so badass. Yeah. And why everybody, if you're listening to this podcast, you should try to make it a point to, and sometime in the next year or two years, make it a priority to go to one because they are the best weekend of the year. Sure. Well, I think there are, there are ways to approach them to make them the best weekend. True. Cause True. I, I've been to five, uh, Adepticons and the last two are the best for a specific yes. reason. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or more generically, just go with friends. Yeah. Um, true. If true, you go true. by yourself, it's just like, you're kind of just standing around and I'm not, the, I'm not the most social person. Mm-hmm. So I don't go in and insert myself in situations and be like, I'm your friend now. And we're going to hang out for the entire convention. It's like, uh, like yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to put that burden on someone if they don't want like someone hanging on their hip. So I want to bring, bring my squad so I can be with them and then interact with other squads, you know, inter, in, in, intermingle and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So the, you have some, some cross squad contamination yeah. at some point <laughs> and then you, nice you move back to home squad Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, as you go. Right. Um, yeah. So this is my, one of my tips to make it a, a fun experience is even if you're not a super sociable person, if you see somebody that you know from a Twitch stream or from YouTube or from um, whatever, you, you know them as a painter, mm-hmm. to say hi. Right. To say, introduce yourself. Mm-hmm. To really don't be afraid to take five minutes of somebody's time. Yeah. And so many good things can happen from that. Um, I know a bunch of people we've met over the last couple of years that I got to know who they were, even though like their online name or them in discord or them on Twitch, even in the, in the chat discussions, they don't even stream themselves. I got to meet them in person, talk to them for a bit. And now we can kind of chat more uh, online mm-hmm. and, and build that, you know, the relationship more meeting somebody in person is so much bigger. Um, I, I think that a, a couple of folks jump out at me is, is Ryan, who's the, um, useless wizard, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and Duff that's impending Duff, yeah, on, Duff on YouTube and Twitch that we really kind of spent some time with them, chatting with them last year. And then over the last 12 months, really got to know them more. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's been awesome. So don't be afraid to come up to people. Don't be afraid. If you see us at a convention to chat with us, I will talk with anybody yeah. about anything. Scott will stand there and pretend to be looking on his camera that he needs to fix something, but yeah, yeah, yeah still yeah. talk to him. I'm really good at doing that. Um, <laughs> no, th- I mean, yeah, the accessibility of people at conventions is amazing. And like, I don't know if people, if people think about this, this way that I do, but when I go to a convention, I expect to talk to people that I don't necessarily know. Uh, so like, yeah, please, if you see me or you see John or you see anyone, just like come up and chat with them. That's the most fun thing to hear about, you know, stuff other people are working on, what they've put in the case at 
uh, Adepticon, whether it's Golden Demon or another competition or whatever. It's so much, it's so much fun. There's like a an atmosphere of like a con a con people, and they you know they're all experiencing the events and you know have different opinions on them or you know stuff like that. So it's good to hear from other people at the convention. Um, but more stories. Most of my stories I'm not realizing are just about awkward interactions I've had <laughs> asking people to sit in front of a camera. Because uh, uh, the first three years I was like, okay, the best way to make a video is to interview all the famous people. And then, uh, and then that, that'll be clickbaity, but that never really worked, but it doesn't matter. I've, I've interviewed a lot of people at Adepticon. Um, I was interviewing Elizabeth Beckley Bradford one time and during the interview, uh, Matt and Ben comments, they bought these like alligator, alligator, like grippy arms, you know, the kinds that are oh, yeah. like arm extensions. And they were like crawling up behind the camera with like these grippy arms until they started to like scratch Elizabeth on the shoulders. And then she like kind of like was like, ah! and she's not really like, she's not one that's very comfortable in front of the camera in the first place. Like she, she's told me that. So that was, that was a good way to kind of like, you know, relax and just have some fun. Break the ice. This doesn't have to be a, a CNN interview. Right. Yeah. yeah. Even though I like to treat them all like that. So what are your opinions on the current mini painting climate? <laughs> <laughs> um, I tried to get an interview with, uh, uh, Kirill Kanayev, the Russian painter, and I walked up to him. And he was like, "No cameras, no cameras," and I was like, "Oh God!" And I was like, "Backed away immediately." Wow! <laughs> um, you you pretend you were trying to talk to somebody else, and you just yeah. keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, no, I didn't want you. Uh, uh, a really good painter. Nope, I wanted this guy. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that was a little awkward. <laughs> uh, yeah, and a lot of these. I mean, when I think back to the things that are the stories I remember most, or the times I. I considered to be the most fun they're all around people at the con yeah yeah because we're all about two degrees from kevin bacon and that environment right <laughs> it's not like our usual life where it's like you have to get like the seven degrees of connections with that person before you like hit something you both either can gel on or you have in common or you can have a logical conversation about but mm -hmm. this it's like just about anyone especially if they're hanging out at the painting area oh yeah or you know they're just roaming around the the display cases for the pieces that up for competition right all those people you can talk to and right. within two sentences i'm just like yep we're just like old friends because you were just on a, such a similar kind of mindset and all those stories are about interactions we've had with people there and i mean a lot of the interactions that i've had and people i've gotten to know whatever if nothing to do with the fact, obviously not the podcast, we didn't have the podcast. Mm -hmm. A couple people have recognized me from, from videos. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's mostly been it. A lot of people recognize me for the story about you and cat turds. Do you know that? No. I mean, I know the story, but <laughs> I didn't know if people recognize. Yeah, people come up to me and they say, Hey, does Scott really have cat turds? He keeps in his pocket. Yeah. What do you tell him? Absolutely. He Absolutely. does. Absolutely. <laughs> no doubt about that in my mind. Uh, another memory from Dr. Khan, maybe last year we did that freaking space team commander thing oh the star trek simulation yeah or like one person's engineering another person is like the captain and weapons and you left forensics whatever yeah uh and we're all just shouting shit at the same time <laughs> yeah it was four of us yeah yeah in this room with tv screens that are whatever and uh that was fun yeah I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to yell. So I picked the captain because the captain isn't dedicated to do any one task. Yeah, he's he there delegates. to oversee everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I did it in a terrible Scottish accent the whole time. And it was, <laughs> it was, that was fun. I don't know if we won or lost. It all looked Not, like. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It didn't matter. But yeah, that, those guys are there, I think, probably every year. I'm guessing. Yeah, they always rent out a little room and you can kind of like, there's like our time slots that you can like get in and do that stuff. It's a lot of fun. Totally worth it. Totally yeah. worth it. I'm sure they go to other conventions as well. Yeah, but I want to talk about, those are all the memories that I have at the moment, but I'm sure more will pop up as we discuss this. Um, like the first thing you do when you when you park in that giant ass parking lot, mm -hmm. and you see you walk 30 minutes to the hotel and it's, it's, not, that <laughs> long. it's not that long. Um you, you know, you go and you get settled and you put your stuff in your room. What's the first thing that you want to do when you get there on a Wednesday? I want to stroll. Okay. I want to just like walk down you like wanna, it's a Wild West You want to breathe the air. Yeah, I want to <laughs> breathe the air. I want to like... Knock the doors open. <laughs> right? 
And I just want to like look around and be like, ah, oh, yes. I have arrived. I have arrived. <laughs> Where do I stand in line for 45 minutes to get my badge, sir? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first thing I do whenever I get Defticon is I really want to go to those glass cases and just look at what's in the display case. Like who who showed up super early and got their minis in the display case? It's that like it's probably like at that point, maybe like 50% of all the entries in whatever painting competition there's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always have to get there and look. There's always a crowd of people around there and sometimes like the people who are have entrance in the competition are there talking about other ones and so yeah. i kind of like you know rub shoulders and be like hey <laughs> that's mine like check it out <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's talk paint yeah um, but yeah. that that is really in there there's a reason why we we'll probably should should deep dive in on this a little bit more about entering something if you go to a convention and you're a painter there is no harm in you entering something sure yeah one of the big reasons Hold is... On, can I stop you? Why, what are you? Are you about to eject out of your chair? <laughs> yeah, I have the parachute in. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. This is my rocket man. <laughs> yeah. um, so when, you have, when you're at the cases and you're talking with people, a very common topic that will come up is, do you have anything? Did you enter anything? Yeah, well, yeah. That's the first question. Yeah. yeah. And so having conversations and having getting feedback and and getting support and things to improve on and things they really like Mm -hmm. you can't do that you're not carrying around like a pocket full of minis you're gonna like show somebody what you painted no right yeah you want to have something in that case Mm -hmm. and not only is there a sense of pride by completing something for a competition no matter Mm -hmm. if you think there is no chance in hell it's gonna win or you didn't even want it to win you just wanted to do this for the satisfaction of of playing the game right Mm -hmm. um you can learn something. You can have conversations. Conversations that start with that oftentimes end up being a lot more interesting or having nothing to do with your piece. But it's a good starter. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a typical entry level question. Is if you if you say nope, I didn't paint anything. No one wants to hear your excuses why you didn't. Right. Yeah. You know, that's part of the reason why I'm like I need to get a golden demon piece done. Because I don't want to have that conversation 50 times at Adepticon. Like, oh, I did Rise in Peace, but I didn't do Golden Demon. I'm sorry. Yeah, here's my reasons, my excuses why I didn't do something, blah, blah, blah. No, there are no excuses. Okay, okay. Are you still going to paint that thing for, for Golden Demon? Yes, Demons? I'm excited But are you going to do it so that you would finish on the same day that you would finish normally? Oh, no. No? Okay. No, I, I want to get the dragon 100% done, then I'm going to paint some stuff for fun. Okay. And, just, and maybe figure out my army scheme. Okay, so I pivoted at the last moment, and maybe we're we're jumping around. Who cares? Um, I had planned to paint something for for Golden Demon as well, um, and I had planned to paint an Ideneth Deepkin based on a cover art of a book called The Court of the Blind King. Um, I'm not the greatest at conversions; they're okay. But at Golden Demon, when the conversion takes away from the sculpt to the model, then that's 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 negative points against you. So I didn't feel confident in my converting ability with the amount of time that I'd given myself to actually accomplish it in a good way. So I had like two and a half weeks to paint something for Golden Demon, which is a lot of time because I'm doing it full time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I get up at five and paint till 4 p.m. So it's, it's a lot of time. Well, um, and you got all your videos done ahead of time. So yes. you could do that. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I decided to pivot and paint Drazar, which is a, a model that one of my patients actually bought for me. Uh, he came in like that Bloodstone of the Phoenix or Blood, Blood of the Phoenix box set. Um, you can get them separate now, but at the time you couldn't. So I wanted to paint him, um, and I'm painting him in a flayed skull, Cabal the Flayed Skull scheme, which is white and red are the main colors. And I started painting that, and we were having like conversations on Discord while you were working on your dragon thing, and I was working on that. And I still fully intend to finish that thing in time for when we would have left for Adepticon. Um, maybe like a day after, uh, who knows, but I'm still going to paint it, and it's going to be the subject of a video and I'm, I'm trying to think about, okay, I have all the time to make a video. What is the best miniature painting video look like and sound like? And so I'm gonna see if I can make something about that while painting Drazar to like the highest standard that I can do. Yeah, I think there's a lot of value there. Of Like this is me trying as hard as I can try. Right. And showing you some aspect of it. Yeah. You know, you, you probably, it's probably not a valuable thing to show every little aspect of every little thing on there is people have short attention spans or they just want to learn what's the most important thing of this. Yeah. 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 The most, the thing that you learned the most or whatever. So I like that. I like that. And that gets you ahead of the game to enter it for next year. Yeah. Also the reason why I want to do it is because I want to, (laughs) I want to suffer like you have suffered, Mm. you know, I feel so 
procrastinators if someone who is someone isn't a procrastinator they look down on procrastinators but not in like a negative way just to kind of like a get your shit together kind of way yeah you know older brother mentality but sometimes procrastinators come out on top this is one of those times and this is one of those times <laughs> yes and but i don't want to be a procrastinator who comes out on top i don't like that i don't like the sound of that i don't like the feeling of that so because I don't want to be like, huh, nana, nana, boo, boo. Like you put a lot of effort. It's like, you still have a beautiful model yeah. at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. And so I want to suffer as you suffered uh, so that, I don't know, maybe that make you feel better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I also want to okay. prove to myself that I could have finished it in the time that I had allotted for myself. Yeah. I think there's a bit of a learning experience there. Sure. Yeah. I, I started, they want to make you feel better. I started the dragon back in like October yeah with the goal of finishing it by january 1st yeah but you had things that happened and yeah stuff. yeah and i i mean you know I, I finished this basement and that counts as hobby time we saw the petition yeah so but it wasn't no you didn't get, you didn't get 106 <laughs> so no um but i i procrastinated on that like i could have buckled down and spent more time on it and mm -hmm. i did that so i could also do a golden demon mm -hmm. so when you look at it when i was like building my base and and doing all that stuff when we were on discord chats while you were starting on Drezar, I was, we were kind of in a similar boat of just starting that piece at that time. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. So you, you shouldn't feel too bad. Um, I think you were much more likely to finish yours than I was to finish mine right. to a high standard. Yeah. You had obligations and also you were going to do things you'd never done before. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how it works. That's, that's another great thing about conventions when you want to put something in the case, you want to like, Hey, I want something I want to be proud of. Mm -hmm. Even if, whether you're trying your hardest or you just want to make it look good, you'll end up doing something you've never done before. It's just, you're right. It's just how it works. Wh whether that is spending more time than you normally spend mm -hmm. or just doing an entirely new technique or using a new material yep yeah. do you at least one thing you'll do different mm. and uh, i'll talk about one of mine in a little bit but i think that it is a useful experience for you um to go through that motion and it will make you a better painter yeah absolutely so. i want to talk about some more good memories okay you, these are just randomly popping into your head yeah yeah and so you're just gonna let it flow got yeah, it yeah i'm so, ready for it okay so i i briefly went over this uh, in the episode with Jeremy, uh, Black Magic Craft, where it's like there are certain levels that you can enjoy the convention. Uh, the first year I went, I was living or I was staying at my parents' house and driving in every day. And I did that two years in a row. And then the next year, uh, I got a hotel with not a random person, but someone I'd never met before in real life. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you remember that. Um, and, uh, it wasn't on uh, the Renaissance Schomburg. And so I had to walk to and from. And whenever I wanted to get miniatures, I had to go walk back to my hotel and then walk back. So, yeah, it was kind of inconvenient. And then the, the fifth year, fourth year, something like that, um, I finally got a hotel room at the Schomburg and could then just float in between my room and the convention center whenever I wanted. And that made the experience just a million times better. So if you're... I think for maximum enjoyment, if you get your buds and you get a room at the convention center hotel, that is the best way to do Adepticon. Whether you're there for two days, three days, or that is the whole thing five days long. Does it start on Tuesday? No, it starts Wednesday. Okay. Well, and even even Wednesday, there's not a lot that goes on. It's no. There's the pre-registration. You can get all your stuff. There's the GW a release thing yeah that's on wednesday night but i don't i don't like the convention hall i don't even think is open yet. okay maybe there are people there but nothing is happening yeah the, the painting area is already open though. right yeah that's fired up yeah um okay so what i wanted to say was because we had a room in the hotel every single night we were we were tipsy or drunk uh <laughs> or somewhere in between <laughs> um and like every time, like, like at, I don't know, like midnight or like 11 p.m. or 1 a.m., we're like, let's just go walk around. Yeah. And so we just walked around like drunk uh, and just giggling at shit. Yeah. <laughs> and we just took laps, like going up the stairs, went across that bridge thing. Yeah. Then went down the stairs by the Bits Bazaar and then walked down the hallway to the paint area and then back up the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> and we just kept doing that. Cause just, you just doing laps. You just see people like Malev would be walking around and be like, what are you doing out here? And yeah. then it'd be like a five minute fun conversation. Then you just keep walking. Yeah. You uh, run into all sorts of people, people that you saw earlier in the day and be like, hey, how did your game go? Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. 
oh, what'd you guys buy? That's a big thing. It's like, oh, oh did you, yeah. did you guys, what did you, you get? What'd you buy? What's your goodies? Yeah. See. And like, oh, did you demo any games? Yes. Because then, like, you get the demo games low down. And you're like, oh, yeah, try this out. Don't try this out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that you get to, you get the maximize the fun of the con by figuring out what other people have been doing. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, like, oh, man, I really want to go back and demo it again. And be like, sweet. Yeah, I'll bring okay. you with. Like, yeah. yeah, I've already experienced it. You can come with me. Yeah, and now you get somebody that you know you get to hang out for a while, and you're not committed to. Mm -hmm. You know, because there are some clingers. I, I'm gonna say this: don't be a clinger <laughs> if you're not in the squad. Oh, right. right. Okay. Yeah. If someone else has a group of friends they're hanging out with, you know, it's fine to talk to us and to you know regulator come back up and, and chat with us. Yeah. But yeah. Or if they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna go eat later. Did you want to go with us to Portillo's and get some dogs? Yeah, dude. And awesome yeah go with them have do that but you know occasionally we've had a person or two that just kind of is like that little that little lamprey that's on the side of the shark <laughs> <laughs> that just like it, you can't kick them you can't kick them you don't got any legs you're a shark you can't <laughs> kick them off and so you don't know, just be a little just be a little sensitive i know not everyone has the, the kind of the social awareness and you don't always know and so i don't think any pe anybody's you know purposely you know, just being a dick, no, yeah. dick hanging around. And They're so just not, excited. Yeah. Yeah. And so if somebody does that with you, here's how you can deal with it. Say, get the fuck off me. No, you don't do, <laughs> you don't do that. Off. You don't do that. You say, okay, you, you do this. You're like, oh, oh, we were, we we're going to go do this. Um, we'll catch up with you later or we'll see you later. Yeah. If you, if you make it like, we're not trying to leave without you, but we're doing a thing. Well, well, we're good to see you or whatever. Sure. Most po people, 99 out of a hundred will not be offended with that they'll get the hint mm -hmm. and you know you might see them later and or you might dodge them next time you see them and they haven't made eye contact <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> um but uh, yeah just be aware of that and and it, i am not saying i don't want anyone to not come and talk to us we just talked about that i want everyone to come talk to us you know it's just some you know occasionally you get somebody that's doesn't get the hint doesn't get the hint no but uh or they want you to come play the game that like you have no interest in have you ever had that um no we had people try to get us to play BattleTech. oh yeah for some reason i was not interested in that game i am zero percent interested in that game i'm not a big mech person no i'm i'm especially not a big ugly as shit mech person. <laughs> <laughs> boom boom shots fired <laughs> i mean i know that there's a nostalgia to it and a lot of people that are really like the game and I, i've heard it's a cool game or a fun game it's because back when 10 years ago or 20 years ago, when their first exposure to Battletech was there, those were cool robots. Sure, yeah. You know, so it's got the nostalgia factor. Yeah. But for me, who has no emotional connection to those models, I'm like, my God, <laughs> that is hot garbage. <laughs> my God. <laughs> uh, another good thing about Adepticon is the uh, one evening there is a bit, Bizarre. And I'm not sure if we've ever really walked around it. We always mean to. Uh, like there's there's an area on the first floor that's like they got like partially painted things or assembled things or stuff like that or or things like in a box at a discount. But upstairs, right above that area, like right when you go up the escalators, uh, I think on Friday night. I don't know what night it is, but there's a a bunch of people. Just they have their tables and they're either trading bits or they're selling things. That's where the classic Sam Lenz quote, "Tau for sale." That's where it comes from. It's in that area. Yeah. He's selling a Tau army or something like that. And those um, were all Uncle Adams. Yeah, and they weren't even his Tau. He was just <laughs> he was the town crier of Tau. Yeah, yeah. the Tau crier. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that area is fun. And right now that's on the top of my mind because I'm doing a little conversion. And I would love to have a resource like that to kind of just like sift through bits and maybe trade some or pay for some right there on the spot. That's always kind of a fun thing that happens. You got them dark elf executioners Ooh, yeah. you need. Uh, before you leave too, maybe we'll look. I got some, some dark elf stuff too. So I'll see if it's um, any of the things you want. A little bit of a spoiler. Dark elves, but not dark elves. What? What? Oh, man. Are you keeping this a secret? I mean, it doesn't need to be, but we also don't need to talk about it right now. No, we don't need to talk about it right now. We're talking about Adepticon right now. Okay. And, and conventions as a whole. We're, we're talking yeah. specifically about Adepticon, but we should be we should note that a lot of what we're talking about would also apply to Nova Open, to uh, ReaperCon, <laughs> to DragonCon. Yeah, KublaCon. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, two um, in in a cool many or not convention. Cool many or not? I don't know. I don't know. Or not? <laughs> Gen Con maybe. I that's such a monstrosity that I don't yeah. know. Maybe that's a different beast. It probably still has most of this that we were talking about, but it also just has a giant pie that this is just a small slice. Right. Yep. Yeah. So we're not saying if you don't go to Adepticon, you're doing it wrong. We're right. saying yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. find a con that excites you or is near you. Yeah. Or your friends are already have friends going and yep. all that kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, is now the point where we discuss our contingency plan. Sure. So we're going to Nova open this Hell year. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we're going, we, we said self, you deserve this. You deserve this. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Uh, Dr. Pepper cans now, when you buy them, it says right on the top, you deserve this. <laughs> there was a time a period where I wasn't drinking soda because I was like, I don't want to drink that much soda. And then I bought a 12 pack of DP for the first time in like six months. And I was like, hell yeah, I, I, <laughs> I deserve do deserve this. this. All right, go on. I just picture like you're at your computer and you're clicking all the signing up for the, all the stuff on yeah. the Nova open site and yeah, you just yeah. crack a DP. <laughs> I deserve this. I deserve this. Slam it. Because <laughs> yes. uh, we, we want to go to another convention. Yeah. And we have been talking for well over a year probably about Con 2, right? Con 1 will always be Adepticon for us. Sure, yeah. Unless, but yeah, unless it blows up. Do we? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, or the zombie apocalypse. You're right. That <laughs> only affects, you know, Illinois. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is our excuse for yeah. con two. When I say excuse, I mean we can justify it to the wives to slide in for the first year of right. Nova. And then it becomes a thing. Yes, then it's a thing. And before they know it, we've already signed up and we can't not go. Yeah, you want to know the great part about this plan? Mm -hmm. My wife edits this podcast. So she's going to figure it out. Damn right? it. Yeah, yeah. And she's going to hear that and she's going to be like, oh, now I know the plan. Uh, but also... What can I say here? <laughs> <laughs> Amber, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we really did only go to one convention this year, honey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? Reapercon's kind of the same time as Nova Open, isn't same, it? It's typically the same weekend. Yeah. Which pisses figure, me off because yeah. I want to do both. Yeah. Figure, you want to do all three? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Monte San Savino, too. Oh, let's yeah. Do it. Let's go. All right. Let's do them all. Oh, bring the heat. All, all of them. All of them. Okay. We need to first win the lottery. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we don't have to. Well, let's just do a Kickstarter campaign with no rewards <laughs> and people can get, just give us money to have fun. It's so crazy. It just might work. Yeah. What if it's, what's the, what's the, um, GoFundMe? Yeah. Well, Go, it's just Kickstarter. Oh, no, GoFundMe but, is different. Yeah. It's more like I have a plight. Yes. And, you know. I, like, did you ever hear about the, the dude that says I'm really hungry for pizza and I don't have any money for pizza and he was looking for $9 for Domino's pizza. And he, he raised like $13,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So we just need to exemplify that. It's like, we want to go to all the conventions. We don't have the money and time to do that. But if you all gave us $7 million, we could do it. We could do it. And I'm sure somebody would do that. Yeah. $7 million, A cool $7 million. Yeah. Bloomberg spent fifty mil five hundred million on his campaign, and that was money down the toilet. The seven million for us would yeah. be easy. dropping the bucket. Right? So yeah. Let's Compared anybody know that. Bloomberg. Yeah, yeah. Get a hold of him. Yeah, we can hook him up with some sweet videos and podcasts. <laughs> That's about all we have to offer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But so, yeah, we're going to Nova Open. Yeah. We're excited. Nova Open isn't identical to Adepticon. There is a difference. It, primarily, that Nova Open is a Nova Open is a charity foundation. Mm -hmm. So all of the events going on and all the classes, all the money that's being earned goes into the pocket of a charity. Uh, there's three to pick from. I think oftentimes they work with uh, a Doctor Without Borders. And mm -hmm. I just I just had a meeting with the Nova Open Charitable Foundation for definitely a surprise in the future. Um, but uh, one of the things that we discussed was how much money they've raised for Doctors Without Borders. And they went from being rejected by them because it's like, what are you going to do for us, your miniature wargaming convention, to doing $300,000 in donations over the last <sighs> two or three or five years, whatever that was. So a significant chunk of change just from people who paint plastic toy soldiers. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. So it's th that that's nice. And because of that, and because of that, just like a 
the thing being focused around charity, I think the the feeling there and the notion there is is one of uh, maybe like more like empathy and love and just like giving back to people with the skills, the time, and the money that you possess. Right. So it has a different air to it. I got it. I got it. Also, they actually have a really nice website. Yes. Okay. Unlike, yes. Unlike <laughs> Adepticon. Unlike Adepticon. <laughs> they seem uh, based on the conversation I had and the, like they they gave me like. I was like, we want to teach a class there, maybe. Mm -hmm. They gave me a form, like a really nicely edited PDF about like, okay, what does setting up a class look like at Nova Open? And so in general, it does seem more well put together than the people who do Adepticon. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, Adepticon has grown exponentially in a short period of time. Sure. And I don't know if they have a lot more staff that can really commit to some of these things that they're what you'd call kind of superfluous they're 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 valuable and they do an awful lot but they're not needed to keep get the plane in the air kind of thing hmm. and and hopefully over time that all that stuff will evolve and maybe having an extra year this year to work on some of that stuff will be nice but i have a feeling there have a whole lot of other things this year to dealing with the with the cancellation and expenses and stuff expenses like that expenses and that will that will but they have a ton of support so yeah they will survive hopefully oh, i hope they have to they have to for our sake, <laughs> for our, uh, our sanity. But yeah, other things that happen at Nova Open that we're aware of is that there's a rooftop bar and uh, every evening people just congregate there and sometimes Sam Lenz puts on a dinosaur inflatable costume Oh, and runs around. Wow. I mean, I don't know if this is a repeat thing, but I kind of expect it to be. Mm, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or at least like a Pikachu onesie. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the lowest bar <laughs> yeah. I expect. Of Speaking of onesies, wrestling match. Postponed, postponed until right. Nova open, right at the rooftop. I was bar. gonna, I was. See, I had a secret weapon here that I was gonna do if the match was not uh, canceled due to Adepticon being canceled. Were you gonna grease yourself up? Um, no, I was gonna go get get COVID nineteen and then go into the ring with them. Oh, there's no way they'd want to wrestle me then. No, wait, how would you get it? You're like in a vial or something. Uh, I work at a hospital. Okay, yeah. I have ways. <laughs> Just like syringe man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, don't touch me. I'm going to cough on you. <laughs> That's probably not a very sensitive joke. No, but no, we, we, we do need more laughter in our lives as a whole right now. As a society is a, as a world. Right. And That's true. That's what this podcast is for. And so as we are stuck here painting, we like we... We as a mini painting society are more prepared. I hate that word. Society? As you get to know me, you'll discover there are words that I hate. Plethora? And, 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 and phrases as well. But yeah, society is a word that I definitely hate. Culture? You like no, it? culture's fine. Okay. Our miniature painting culture. Thank you. Has <laughs> prepared us for an event like this, unlike any other hobby. Oh, right. Yeah. I see what you're getting at. Yeah. This, this is nothing. This yeah. is, this is, we get our armies finally painted. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is making a small dent that is in the mountain of gray shame that we all have. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the time for us to, to see other resources online, whether it's videos, whether it's podcasts, whether it's Twitch streams that we can sit in the privacy of our own home, painting little plastic men. And watching YouTube videos. And watching videos. Listen to podcasts. Yeah. Listening to PCasts. PCasts. <laughs> I don't know about that word. Ah, uh, yeah. I think that's not a real thing, and people won't know what you're talking about when you say it. Right. You know, I realize when telling people the things that I don't like to hear. That's not smart. I give them the ammunition right. to fuck with me. Yes. So people are going to come around and be like, <laughs> the society. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, you're so funny. <laughs> Oh, it's funnier the more you say it. You should keep doing it. <laughs> uh, I know. I know. People like to razz you, though. That's part of the... Part Something of the, about my personality invites it. Yes. And so, yeah, I've just learned to live with it. Yeah. I think your response is the reason. What's the response? I don't know, but it works. Okay. okay. So I don't. I can't tell you what to fix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, but just, I, I'm just screwed. I can tell you it's wrong. <laughs> uh, no, you can give it to that, that. We all know those people that like they like to give crap, but they can't take it at all. Sure, that's like everyone in a YouTube comment section, right? Yeah, yeah. You you can't fire back no. because then it's personal. But oh, yeah. you can personally 
a cost to me. Yeah. I'm just going to try to keep using random words to find ones that you don't like. Okay. I mean, um, I could just tell you when we stop rolling. Yeah, you shouldn't say it recorded. No. All my all my personal friends from high school, they know. There's like a list of six words. You just don't say them. Mm. Okay. All right. Is it has to do with like how it sounds? It has to do with just uh, overuse. The, the, yeah. There are connotations of the word. So, for instance, the word society. Why do I hate the word society? Uh, in high school, I took a class called AP English, Psych Advanced Placement English. I took it two years in a row. And we'd often discuss the books we were reading. And I just had this very not fond memory of whenever like a question came around to someone who had no fucking clue what was going on. The word society always popped up into their answer. It just makes you sound smart. Right. Right? Yeah. You know, okay, the classic phrase is, we live in a society. Oh, uh, so, yeah. So it's just like, you're, you, that's the word that people use when they're trying to sound smart, but they're not smart. Yeah. They, you know did, I mean? they don't really know where they're going. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I hate that word. <laughs> okay. Yeah. In today's society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a, a commonly used phrase too around that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that falls <laughs> that falls into something in, when I teach writing writing skills for work that the phrases that I say are the first things that need to be cut out of your professional writing mm. because not only are they unnecessary, don't tell me about today's society, just get to the point. Sure, yeah. Um, and in business writing, you shouldn't be fluffing around. Um, but also it, it means different things to different people. Oh, yeah. Um, and oftentimes those kinds of phrases, especially when overused, have a negative impact on your audience before you've even gotten to what you're trying to say. And so that is really your example here too didn't matter what they were going to say after in this society. You know, I've never thought about writing, considering other people's worldview. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting. It's one of my six steps in becoming a better writer is, is really understanding and focusing on your audience. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have a Ted talk on this. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no. That'd be sick. <laughs> there might already be one. <laughs> I want, yeah, I need, I need a laser pointer and I need a big ass screen. Yeah. Yeah. And I need like an empty auditorium because we can't get together now. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll build in like the, the laugh track from Seinfeld. Yes. And, yeah. That's right. a great idea. This is, this is wonderful. What else are we talking about? What about us about conventions, specifically mini conventions really resonate with you as being uh, just a valuable thing or very fun for you? Well, we talked about events very briefly tournaments and things like that but one of the major cool things about adepticon that's a drawing factor and probably any convention is the events the larger events so whether that is games workshops preview for their new products mm. like that's on always on that first wednesday or if it's for uh, a large 40k tournament or large h sigmar tournament or it's like uh alfonso Geraldes is like two day long or three day long, whatever it is, like eight hour each day painting class. Yeah. There are events for wherever you are on the spectrum of skill, whether it's, you know, you're new to 40 K tactics and you want to take a class literally about tactics mm -hmm. that exists. Yeah. Oh, more than one. <laughs> yeah. More than one. Um, or if you're a hardcore gamer and you want to take your latest cheese list and see if you can fight against other cheese lists, that's there for you as well. Or if you're just getting into painting, that's there. Or if you're into the crunchiest NMM or stuff like that, that's there for you too. And they're all taught by people who are serious painters. Yeah. 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 The events lists at these places are pretty extensive. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Adepticons is massive and looking through Nova's when looking at classes because it's Roman Lapot's going to be there. And oh that's my a, gosh. Yeah. That's another big draw that why we picked Nova. <laughs> Get him on the podcast, dude. Oh yeah. Dude. Roman, we, you can't evade us. No, we're coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to see a, a cardboard box scooting around. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> scuttling. <laughs> yeah, <and> it, <laughs> <laughs> Red exclamation point goes above our head. <laughs> We see you, Roman. <laughs> Damn it. Um, so, yeah. So, so and those, not only can you get to talk to these amazing painters and, and get their feedback in real time around the, the case, um, but you can also take classes from them, mm -hmm. you know, and there's just so many options. Um, and, you know, I know that uh, ReaperCon and Nova and Adepticon and Gen Con 
um, Dragon Con. There's a ton of them all have some form of classes. Typically, the bigger the con, the more options. Mm-hmm. Um, and if the con is more painting focused, you'll get more painting options. If the con yeah. is more gaming focused, you'll get more gaming options. Yeah, so like on one spectrum, you have LVO, which is like a Las Vegas Open, mostly gaming. Uh, yep. And you have Reaper Con, which is mostly painting focused. That, that'd that be like two ends of the spectrum. Yep, that's a that's a good good thing. Uh, another thing I really like is new shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like and going... discounted shit. Yeah, I like spending moolah. <laughs> and you know what, though? The, the last two years I went, I've always been like, oh, didn't spend too much money. I better be careful about spending the money, John. Don't spend too much money. And <laughs> this year... Your, is that your interior voice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my voice of, of, like, being a reasonable adult. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but this year, prior to cancellation, I'm like... I got a credit card. Let's do this thing. <laughs> I'm not Let second. Let her rip. Let her rip, bud. And if you see something at a table and it's Thursday and you really kind of want it, buy it on Thursday because it might be sold out on Friday. Oh, we dude. have made that mistake. Dude, that reminds me of another good story. Oh. The the VIG things. Oh, maybe. That's a, that's a story. Yeah, dude. So there are, for Adepticon, there are VIG uh, tickets that you can buy that gets you access to a swag bag of stuff. Yeah, big old bag of stuff. Right. And so at the very end of the con on Sunday, mm-hmm. right? Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there were several of these like goodie bags that the people who paid for them didn't pick them up. Right. And they're like, we're going to get rid of them. And we're like, can we buy them at a discounted rate? And they were like, yeah. And we're like, hmm. They're like, come back at 2 p.m. on Sunday. Yeah. And we'll sell them to you. Cash Mundo. Like half off? Yeah, it was like 60 bucks, I think. Yeah, and it was like, there was so much crap in there. Yeah. And then we went home and promptly resold all of it. <laughs> yeah, that was, all right, so that was, it was such a feel good, like we we won the system kind yeah. of experience. <laughs> yeah. Until we went home and we opened everything, we were like, I don't know what I'm going to do with any of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, did you end up keeping anything? Um, I think I had kept a couple minis. Um, and oh, there was like some paints in there and some basing stuff. The basic stuff, yeah, I kept that. and all that kind of stuff. I kept all of that. Yeah, yeah. There was the brush cleaner that was great. Yep, I kept that. But you know, a lot of the minis, like if, if there was like con exclusive ones for games that I didn't play, like there was a Malifaux one. Mm-hmm. A buddy that played Malifaux, I just gave it to him. I'm like, you know, you like the game. This is cool. You're gonna ex- be more excited than me. I sold the GW con oh, exclusive yeah, model. Definitely, like, yeah right away yeah um, easy easy money I sold the box game but it depends on the box game too like if it was a year where you're really excited about the box game yeah um this it, year was a song of ice and fire yeah i can't remember what it was when we did it, it was the big box game but anyway. uh, oh, it was, was it dark guild, dark was, age oh no it was guild, guild ball. ball yeah, yeah, yeah the guild big ball. guild ball yeah, yeah which was cool yeah i still have it actually yeah i that i that i did sell but after I had bought all the stuff for my Guild Ball team that I didn't need anything out of that box anymore, and I mm-hmm. bought all the other tchotchkes, the ruler sticks, <laughs> the and tchotchkes. The ruler sticks and the dice and everything. So I didn't. I realized I didn't need it, and I could just sell that and basically pay for most of my, my Guild Ball team. So That's good. Um, That's good. Yeah, I kept it just like I have multiple teams to play with in case someone wanted to try it out. It's like, okay, I have you know four or five you can pick from. Uh, yeah. But a lot of the companies at these cons... They either release a new product or they have con exclusive or both. Mm, yes. So one of the big ones that I was looking forward to is Creature Caster is not only coming out with new models that we're launching for the first time at the convention, but also a new set of nine paints, new colors. Oh. So I wanted to get those as well. Are these special in any way? They're just new colors. Okay. It's not like they're like they're not like metallics or they're not like uh, like a... I don't think they're related in any way. The colors. No, what they what they do is they they look at their their paint line as a whole, mm-hmm. and then every time they do a new edition, it's I think it's right around nine colors each time. Mm-hmm. Um, they look at what they're missing, and they look at what they can add to it to kind of fill out their their range as a whole. Um, typically, they add like one extra metallic, and then the rest of them are non metallics. Sure. So this time, I know one of the colors is a really nice looking turquoise. They just didn't have a turquoise. Turquoise is a great color. You use turquoise in M- NMM a lot. You use turquoise in reflection colors for sky. You use turquoise as a, as a pretty highlight color. Mm-hmm. You know, verdigris is a great example there too. So there's one of the colors that they've added. Sure. They've added, I think, a nice mid-tone orange brown, which is a great uh, NMM gold starting point. Mm. 
Your good old Scrag Brown. Yeah, good old Mornfang Brown. Is that, yep. the, is that the new hotness right now for starting NMM Gold? Yep. So I look forward to that. Um, I look forward to finding stuff that I can't easily get online. Sure, yeah. So like European companies yeah. or very specific. They only sell through their own site, and it's not free shipping unless you spend $100 or yes, more. Yes, Michigan Toy Soldier. Yeah. That place is sick. Like they have all those crazy like MIG pigments and like mm-hmm. all that gamer grash tuft and like they have all this great stuff. I freaking love that area. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about shipping. You don't have to worry about like, oh, do I need this? No, I did. I you know I have to buy more things if I really want to make the order worth it. No, it's just like pick up what you want. Pick yeah. it up. And like Badger stuff is always crazy discounted too. Yeah, Badger's a great example of discount. Yeah, I bought that the huge forty ounce primers of white and black three years ago. There's they're over halfway full still, and they're both fine. They're both fully, and they're not like thick or anything. Uh, so yeah, that was a super great deal. Yeah, but the Badger Primer that's a great example of something you get on day one. I went last year yeah, to buy Badger Primers yeah, yeah, yeah. on a Saturday, it wasn't even Sunday on Saturday, and all the traditional colors were sold out black, yeah. white, gray, any kind of a neutral. I mean, there was like you could get like a weird pink or a lime green primer, big bottle. It's like, I don't. Not gonna use that much of that. Yeah, um, but yeah, you know, a good thing to wait for toward the end of the convention though is that uh, Badger sells the airbrushes that were used in the classes. Uh, so Ooh. Ken loans out airbrushes for classes that need airbrushes, 105s and Sotar 2020s, and then he sells them for like 40 percent off. So Sotars for like 60 bucks, Badgers for like 40 or 50 bucks, something like that. I bought my Sotar that way for super cheap nice and they fix them for free if there's a problem wow. so you just mail them in for 10 bucks uh that's usps priority shipping and then uh they they freaking fix it for free and send it back if there's something wrong with it anyways damn it's a sick deal that's some customer service for you right there heck yeah ken badger ken badger scary his last man. name isn't even badger but no, it's show felt but everybody just calls him ken badger or maybe just us i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a thing it's a thing for okay. sure all right yeah He's always, we talked about this before, he always looks stressed out and sweaty. Yeah, dude, he's, yeah. Because people always fucking with him. <laughs> they walk up to him and he's like, do you have this thing on sale? And he's like, can you read the sign right in front of you? Are you right. fucking blind? <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he's not the sales guy persona, but he's also the dude that's selling all the stuff there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, one place about, in regards to discounts, there's that, uh, okay, so it's like, you're walking down the hallway from the painting area and then you hang a right and then there's the doors on your left uh, to get to the cases. And then in between there and the next set of doors, there's always like this like area where you can buy stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's like partially painted things, assembled things, or just stuff that's still in boxes, right? The bits area you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's not bits. It's, it's mostly full models, but you can't buy single one-off things. Sure, yes. Um, but they have these huge Tupperware containers that are like labeled like Skaven or 40K or like Space Marine or whatever. But I love rifling through those things for like, you know, we, we look through Guild Ball. We found yeah. like super discounted things in there. Yeah. And that was always sick. That Yeah, that place is... I have I have wasted many an hour digging through large tubs of random army stuff to buy to buy things for bits or for yes. add on kits or yes um, you can find some great gems in there but you got to be willing yeah, to spend gotta, two hours or more yes yeah, you see people, yeah you walk by you see people sitting on the floor with, oh, like, yeah. a, with a Tupperware thing open just like rifling through right yeah. that's that's the life yes in fact I think I got. At least one of my sprues of Dark Elf stuff that I have was from that. Oh, yes. So, Damn it. Yeah, baby. Yeah, no, you I missed wish. out on that this year. Yeah, no, don't don't remind me. But you know what? Like each year by the time the end of that con happens, like his supplies go down. And then the next, next year, you know, the supplies have been uh, replenished. I see He's thinking about that. He's getting, like his load has been built up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, like that at all? Oh, well, I mean kind of seems like that's what's happening to me yeah maybe we'll find out you know in 2021 right and then wednesday night 2021 when the doors open you just blow the load (laughs) (laughs) everyone's just searching all in his load (laughs) (laughs) everything's sticky (laughs) all right Uh, so what we learned is conventions are great you should go to one you will not regret it 
even if you're not a super social person, I know a lot of folks that we end up talking to and getting to know there aren't, um, but you will end up having a lot of great inter interactions, a lot of great fun, and we highly recommend it. So with that said, we're going to put close this book. We're going to get your stupid bookmark out of there. Scholastic bookmark is Gandhi. And, uh, <laughs> and now we're on to the newsy news. We're on to some newsy news. That was I meant that to be the like the newswire sound, but it more it sounded just sounded like, like a techno yeah. strong web. Yeah. I tried. Uh, what's new in the news? New yeah. in the news. Um of course everyone knows about Darren's YouTube channel getting canceled. Darren Latham. Very yeah. mysterious. Yeah, so it's like no YouTuber cancels their channel and then removes their videos yeah who does that no one does that you just stop making videos right it, it's a gradual thing it's usually not like a conscious decision or it's like some great event in life yeah. causes you to stop i you lost say, my job and i'm you know focusing on other things yeah. right so but you usually even when those things happen people don't say i quit they say I'm in a spot where I can't make videos right now. Yeah. You know? So the channel is kaput. He finished up the master class on that uh, Nurgle dude. Yep. And he said, this will be my last video. This Lots is Lots of people following through with that thing, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. He's putting on Instagram all on the people story, that, yeah. have, that have finished it. And there's some really good looking ones. Mm -hmm. So so not only is that was that his last video, which was in March that went live, May 18th, I believe, is the exact day when the channel will be deleted. Dude, the whole channel? The whole channel and all of its videos <laughs> will be deleted. This stinks of something. Yeah, it certainly does. Yeah. Um, I think there is a very specific purpose for this, and it's not Darren's decision. Yeah. Um, however, I'm hoping that where this leaves something else will be able to take its place with Darren involved. That's my hope. Specifically someone who downloads all of his videos and puts them on a different YouTube channel? Well, that's not what I'm saying. That's already being done. Yeah, that's, that, that, that is done. Yeah, people, his videos will not die. They will not be deleted forever. They will, they will be living on through others that are going to be able to share them. But I'm saying more broadly that I hope Games Workshop can learn from some of the things Darren did on his channel and the success he had and integrate that with into their company. Right. That's my hope. I hope they're not so dense to not see the value and the, uh, you know, the following and all that good stuff that came from this. Um, so and I hope them as an saying it. You're just saying it's GW's fault. I never said that. Uh, -uh. Mm -hmm. I just said that games workshop, he, he used games workshop models and he, did he only use Games Workshop Paint? As far as I'm aware, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it it just felt like a very high-end version of the Warhammer Community Painting videos. Is really what it, the it painting, felt like. The painting yes. was, yeah. Yes. Um, so I'm hoping that if this is going away, that Games Workshop will fill that void. Sure. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm not saying that they're the reason he's going away, Scott. I would never say that. I mean, that's what everyone's thinking, right? So, yeah. like, someone posted about it in our Facebook group. Uh, by the way, if you want to join it, it's linked in the show notes below. Trapped yep. in a plastic Facebook group. Um, and, you know, all the comments are like, oh, it's GW's fault because everyone likes to, you know, claim that GW is the, the problem, the scapegoat for all their issues with their favorite game and their favorite YouTubers, apparently, now it's, as well. Um, but who knows? It is very strange, though. Yeah, it. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is we're not yeah. going to have a full expose on on this. It's a bummer, sure. and in you know in line with the rest of this episode. Yeah, it's dude. a bummer. <laughs> it's a bummer, dude. Bummer, bro. All right. Um, the next thing I writ, writ rat wrote down in the news section was Adapticon has been canceled. I think we probably covered that. Yeah, the one thing we didn't talk about though is unpackaging the idea that you want to destroy the model you spent well over a hundred hours painting. Yeah, so in right. what world would that ever make sense in a human's brain? In that moment when the update was official and Adepticon posted that it's canceled, 
my brain wasn't really a human's brain. <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a dog's brain. Yeah, what? It, well, no, it was more <laughs> like the brain of one of the aliens from Aliens. Okay, yeah. That, I just Xenomorph. wanted... Yeah, I just was there to rip out chests <laughs> and breed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no purpose other than destroying everything because I had felt destroyed. Okay. So I was like, that is the, that is the, the physical like symbol of the cancellation. It was my piece that I worked so hard on. And I'm like, okay, you took this from me. I am going to take everything from you. I'm just imagining you talking to your dragon. <laughs> yeah. You took this from me. <laughs> you okay. shall burn. I guess that makes sense if you are in, in visualizing the the cancellation of the con as your miniature, why you'd want to destroy it. All so, right. You're I mean, it, it, so I, uh, yeah, in that moment, I really was like, I had thought about it. Luckily, if I was did, nowhere near my basement. If you did, you need to record it. Okay? Oh, I'm not going to do it because I spent like 150 to 200 hours on something to have a 20 second video that gets 3000 views. Oh, like, no. Oh, no. No. Yeah. Do you know the guy who burned his Dark Elf army after Age of Sigmar came out? Yes. I've never seen the video, but I know of its. It has well more. Well more? Wow. It has a lot more than 3000 views. Oh. Well, I mean, still, even if you get like $700 in AdSense, which is like a million views, right? Give or take, depending. That's, I don't care. $700 is not going to make or break me. No. It was 700000 Yeah, I'd fucking burn it right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, also the other thing to think about was that guy, that guy was the pioneer of destroying your mouths and making right. videos. So if, if you're like the second place guy, it's like, all right, is he going to do as well? Who knows? Right. Yeah, that's like. You know, that's the name of the YouTube game is somebody, somebody does something that becomes really popular. And you copy them. And then this just copy, 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 copy Fiverr. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah. The Fiverr trend is huge with big channels. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. Adepticon's canceled. Uh, last item in news. Adepticon, company or not, has a Kickstarter where they are selling uh, a marvel game with chibi miniatures mm -hmm. and uh this it had a spider-man version a model in it obviously because spider-man's a huge part of the marvel universe and the community outcry about how not dynamic his pose was was heard by cool many or not and they actually paid for someone to re-sculpt it and that's kind of I don't know why I call it unheard of, but looking at the original model, and we'll have pictures of it up on the screen and also linked in the show notes below, the original model is fine. You think so? Yeah. And I the mean, new one is is fine too. They're just, they're just different things. Yeah. It, the, the old one is pretty derpy, especially when you look at... I mean, chibis are always derpy. What are you talking about? Yeah. These, I actually think these are pretty cool, but mostly because they had a badass painter do all those paint oh, jobs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They look amazing. None of ours would look like this. I think we got Ruben it. Martinez was yes. doing this. Yeah. Yeah. RMA. Oh, yeah. Um, Dude's fucking amazing. Yeah. His stuff is just bananas. But, yeah, Spider-Man's doing this weird, like, um, like action figure thing where one arm is directly straight out and the other arm is directly straight back. Yeah. And, yeah, he's doing the hand things. but he's that doesn't balancing. It doesn't make up for the fact that whoever in any universe does this. Just walking. <laughs> oh, he's not. He's leaping off of a rock. No, he's, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, I guess technically you could interpret it as that, but it just kind of looks like he's walking down a slope. Okay, the way I see Spider-Man is in a gymnastic way. Dude's wearing freaking spandex. Yeah. Okay, he's thin, and he flings around NYC on a, on a rope. So yeah. I feel like he's going to have these acrobatic movements where he's flaring his arms out in weird ways. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I I guess so. I think they they checked that box, but they didn't check a dynamic pose box. It's like that is dynamic. What are we talking about? This is not dynamic. <laughs> like if he's like like back flipping off of like a you know a skate park wall or something, <laughs> and his arms are out with yeah, a with a dynamic with a sub sandwich in his hand, right? And a slice in the other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, that's the mini they should have made. Yeah, they and they. 
I like that they took their feedback and they implemented. That's that's pretty big. That's, yeah. that's something that you just don't hear happen. If it's like, this is the thing we're making. Buy it or don't buy it. Yeah, suck it up. Yeah, I think it's good for the industry as a whole that we can go with that trend of really absorbing community feedback and doing that to make better products. Yeah, but it's always hard to know, right? Like if it's just an outcrying of uh, like a small percentage of people that are just really loud Mm -hmm. or if it actually matters. Yeah. Like when the Sonic trailer came out for the new Sonic the Hedgehog movie, (laughs) the outcry about how awful he looked and also a myriad other things uh, was so, so loud and probably a good representation about how people felt about the thing as a whole. Yeah. Um, And they made a change like, okay, we're going to postpone the release of this movie and we're going to remake the character of Sonic to make him look more true to the actual character. Okay. That makes sense. But in this scenario, was that the case? Was it a representation of the majority of their community or was it just a few people who were loud and obnoxious? Mm -hmm. I feel that oftentimes the creators, the people that are decision makers, they already have this feeling of like, ooh, man, yeah, this Spider-Man looks kind of derpy. Yep. We definitely don't love it, but well, we'll put it out there and, you know, whatever. And then when they get enough, like the teeter-totter tips just enough, yep. then they're like, okay, yeah, that's just kind of reinforces our unease with it. Let's let's go forward. Sure. Um, so I don't think if it's something that they're super proud of, and they thought looked fine or great or whatever, and mm-hmm. they heard feedback, they would have changed it. I think they probably was already inside. They were in that same boat. Yeah, that can happen, definitely. All right, we're at the end of the podcast. Or the PCAST. The P- Quit saying PCAST. That's gonna <laughs> that's gonna be my society word from now on. <laughs> we appreciate that you guys spent your I don't know, hour and forty five minutes listening to us go on about the fun parts of Adepticon, um, and kind of, you know, joining us on a what do you want to call it? A virtual memory tour of yeah. Adepticon. Oh crap! We should tell people about Adepticant. We forgot to do that. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. So the the both the uh, people that run Adepticon as well as a bunch of wonderful uh, community members are pulling together something called Adepticant. Yeah. And this is a Facebook group you can join, in where they have all sorts of events that will be going on while Adepticon was going to be live. So that yeah. Wednesday through Saturday, or excuse me, Wednesday through Sunday of the week, this video goes live. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see not only all sorts of like virtual classes and Twitch streams and YouTube videos and all these kinds of things, but also tons of sales and product stuff from all the people that were going to be, be vendors at the hall. And you can have exclusives and access to great sales on products and minis and everything else you just gotta join the facebook group that we'll have linked in the show notes below yeah that's it so now for realsies this time we're gonna end the episode realsies peelsies realsies peelsies so scott when oh how can they support us yes if they want to be a part of our our mini uh society (laughs) (laughs) were you gonna say mini family (laughs) no i can't say that no that phrase is copyrighted i would have to give you seven (laughs) dollars There are several ways to support the Trapped Under Plastic podcast. One of the ways is uh, being worn by John right now. A beautiful t-shirt with our logo on it. And also you can get a, they call crew neck sweaters. Sure. A pullover, a jumper. Uh, if a jumper. <laughs> if you're British, you can find that below. It's the Teespring uh, website. Uh, additionally, you can also support us on Patreon. We have a, uh, a few tiers well just two really uh, a two dollar one and also a five dollar one that gets you access to the after party after party uh, which uh, basically is an extended version of the podcast wherein you can hear us talk about our favorite miniatures from other painters that we discovered in the last two weeks or also how we critique one of those five dollar patrons you can hear the feedback and also get feedback on one of your miniatures and then finally you can also hear about a new thing that john and i experimented with in the hobby world and our results from our experiment and maybe future ones we're going to look into doing that's it i think you hit all of those wonderful areas to support us Mm -hmm. we appreciate that you can also make sure that you hit the likes subscribe the give us the uh votes what do they call it ratings reviews reviews on apple podcasts or other podcast sites Mm -hmm. definitely Uh, let your your fellow quarantined mini painters know about us if you want to share us on your social media or whatever so more folks get the opportunity while they're stuck inside and doing some hobby and they got something cool to jam out to Mm -hmm. so with that 
We will catch you on the flippity flop.